I'm not a little crazy for you. Balance it. I, you thought it was good the first time? Man, we had so much fun, we could do it again. Hello, my people. How you doing today? It's been a long time coming. What I have to say. Look at our culture. Things are not the same. Let's not sit down and do nothing while it goes down the drain. Things are me. Let's not for the master in us. The musician and mass maker. Yeah, folks, a good thing, a sweet thing, a sour thing, so much to be thankful for, right? Any time of the day, storm or no storm, tell me who don't like a good thing, all right? <laughs> My son, 
It's one of those, I don't care whether it is midnight, quarter after three in the morning, or five in the afternoon. Lordy be. Don't care whether it's dark or it's light. Time is always right for a good thing. All right. And speaking of good things, I got a, a, a good thing for some call here. It's telling me that they, they, they changed they change their religion and they keep their face happy now and stay on the high road. Good morning, Jared. How are you doing? <laughs> morning, dog. <laughs> I good. You good. All right. I like I like that um, introduction. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's good hearing your voice and uh, how you make it through the storm. Well, I mean it was wet outside, but other than that, I was good. You were good. All right. Good thing. Yeah, I uh, was good. I just I was wondering, you know, how the 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 governor's telling people to inside and all these kind of things but one of the areas that people had to stay inside was in Frederickstead where there's still some of the roofs still not repaired yeah still have issues from that, from that program I the car no vision tomorrow <laughs> you know what I mean I mean listen that, that program been around so long I mean um, you know, your my good friend and yours, Carmen, she was fighting with that. When her father was alive, he died, and she in turn died, and and the mother is still alive, and it's still the house in six years. Yeah, 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 yeah. You well, know, you know, there's there, there's a there's a, a scandal to that that just kind of really kind of coming out now, and I know when I said that. Everybody ear turned to the radio listening, want to get it, the, the, the good juicy stuff. No, it ain't no good juicy stuff. Look at what's happening in Puerto Rico. And it's it's coming out now that only maybe like 15% of the billions of dollars that have been earmarked for Puerto Rico has been spent. And one of the things that we, we have to come to grips with is that it's one thing to promise me something, meaning the federal government. Mm-hmm. But they'll come up with all kind of ways to make it onerous to actually get the money. Mm-hmm. And it kicking our butt with the hospital. It kicking our butt with the schools. It kick, I mean, this is something now, of course, you know, now is election time and everybody looking for who to blame for whatever. But the reality is, the reality is, okay, what's going on with getting this money from FEMA in reality, not in promise, but in reality, that is a rough one there that needs to be reworked. That ain't, that ain't in our control. You know, and these things happening now, in a way, maybe might be more embarrassing or, or bring it to the forefront um, that hopefully they're going to address it. Okay? I say hopefully. I say, ho- say hopefully. You, you, you see your, your boy in New York, they're, they're trying to run you out of business and shut down the whole thing, right? Um, but he looked he look for all of that. Yeah, he, he looked for all of that. But the, 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 the sad thing is how many years that people know about what's going on, okay? And looking the other way, all the way up to the U.S. Attorney Office. They were annoying and having proof is two different things. Well... Yeah. They, they got proof now. They got they got the proof together now, and it was it was just about doing the work, doing the work, yeah. and 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 the same way he stick it to 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 Cohen, <laughs> uh-huh. the same way Cohen lay out the map, and just saw the lady say, uh huh, okay, let me go and check this out, and sure enough, everything has been falling in place to show that there has been a problem. Now, uh. In the news last week and week, two weeks before, and that's two weeks before the hurricane, <clears throat> or what's going on in Mississippi, okay? And you got those folks down in Mississippi that got all of that TANF money for families of special need. All that money was being spent on everything except what it was. It's a big scandal. People don't plead guilty, all kind of stuff. Um, but it's still going on, uh, the, the investigation. And really, you, you've, got, you've got 
government leaders that are just outright doing everything other than taking care of the constituents that they swore an oath to take care of. Yeah, well, that's, that's a custom. <coughs> yeah, well, I ain't gonna never get custom. <laughs> I, I sorry. I go if you gonna call it complaining, then I gonna complain. I I, I would mm. ma- rather look at it as shining a light in that regard. So, yeah, it would have been good if we had had a a shelter or two open. Uh, yeah, I don't know what all the logistics would have been in doing that, but considering the state of affairs, that folks may be able to have a a dry environment during normal times but when that wind start to blow and bringing the water in to some of these places where they still have blue tarp or or whatever other thing that they hook up just so they could have a dry space inside that may not hold up right yeah Yeah. and that's what that was my that was in my car i'm like you know the government ain't said thing about that they don't know how i keep my days there yeah. Think about the people and whose house has not been repaired. Right. And to say, well, let's open a shelter or two and tell them to come there and wait out the storm over there because by the grace of God, the storm went the other way. Yep. Suppose it, it had decided at the last minute to take a ton for us. What would happen then? Okay. <laughs> no, 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 no. We don't even want to think about that, okay? And no, but I'm just saying, suppose that's what happened. I know. But I think and that end up, things are end up all that one. Well, Jared, I, I'm going to tell you, at the beginning of the show, I was talking about how much we have to be thankful for. Yeah, be- I know. I heard you. Because you know, so, so I was that, not... Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thank God that it didn't happen, you know. So we need to be thankful that we didn't get a hit like what we got in Maria. And but we need to think about what could have happened. And, Jared, it was so interesting yeah. to watch the movement of the storm. I mean, it actually got pushed down south as it got to St. Croix, it got pushed down south. We just got the little edge. Yeah. And then it just saw it turn back up and went straight over Puerto Rico. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was uh, over the last couple of days, they were mashing up the tops and cables and all this kind of thing. Yeah. So, so I was like, mm-hmm. okay. Yeah, so... But- Get boss well, and the I, get boss and the off and running, my son. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so oh, I ain't gonna man. stay too long because I ain't got I, I got a little part of sinus issue there. All right. And I just got to sometimes you know, things will start to I'll start to cough like I coughing up along. <laughs> oh God, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> okay. But before before it kick in on the air, I gonna cut you loose. All right. Uh, Sound like a plan. It it has come out it has come out without any um notice. Any notice, yeah. All right. Well Yeah, been you know, when that player started they gave me some antibiotics and they said those things to take but All right. Well, it's still bothering me. Follow Doctor Zara's. That's what you gotta do. Yeah, try, try nothing. Okay. Try nothing. All right. Well you try you nothing. take care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, uh-huh. you are going there. Well now I kinda of test on me. Ah, uh, that's the one. They could tell, they could tell me what wrong. And that's the comment say, it looks like you have a sinus infection. Blah, 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 blah. I'm like, okay. <laughs> but at least... <laughs> well, it's, bet, it's better that you, that you go and get whatever help you can. You know, it, it may not seem like, like uh, it's enough, but hey, the bottom line is follow the doctor's orders and get better. You know what? Yeah, train a okay. thing. Like I said, train a thing. Okay. Before, before the cough and fit come on, I mean, let me cut you loose and uh, I'll keep listening. All right. We'll be talking. All right. Okay Take then. Take care. All right. Good thing. Good morning, WSDX. Yes, sir. Good morning. I'd like to be on the air. You're on the air on Reflections. Oh, good morning, sir. How are you doing? Great, fantastic, outstanding, and a whole lot more. That's Canton. You know who talking to you? No, I don't know. You have you have the advantage. Okay, this is Kier. Oh man, I I haven't heard your voice in ages. Yeah, know? well, well, now and then I listen, you know, and all of that there, but uh, I don't really talk too much. All right. So how? Te- yeah, yes. Is is Texas but, your day? Yes, yeah, still in Texas. Oh, yes, yes, right. yes. Good thing. In good Texas. Thing. Uh, 
everything going crazy, you know. Well, you all talking about Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands. The eggs, the dozen of eggs used to be for 99 cents. Now it's two dollars and fifty nine cents. Whoa. Milk used to be such. Um, I like that stuff. Uh, this and that. This and everything going up. The gas is about uh, four three fifty nine. Well, my son, it 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 going to be a rough. It going to be a rough six to eight months coming. I see it. I see it happening already. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I telling you, everything just going up, going up is unbelievable. Okay, I am. I want to ask you a question. I hope I can answer. Yeah, um, you know, you know, Sunday and Monday was thirty three years of Hurricane Hugo, right? Yeah. Exactly 33 years because it happened a Sunday and a Monday. Mm -hmm. Okay, since Gerard listening, I have a question to ask you. And he doubting me. Now, you remember Grand Union? Yeah, those were the days. Okay, did they open after the hurricane? I really don't remember. I don't remember. You got me there. <laughs> okay, I could remember because I used to walk plaza and there was competition. Uh huh. Now, after he, hurricane, they get looted, but they never open. Pueblo open up. Oh, Remember okay. that? Yeah. And then Pueblo didn't last long, and then that's when Sonny Isle opened champs and office marks and then places. Uh huh. Gerard telling me after Hugo, he got a job with Grand Union, and I told him no, because Grand Union never open up after Hugo. Well, my son, I go, I go let I or two then figure that one out. <laughs> well, I, I telling you, I telling you, Mister Canton, me, I know, I know Sunny Isle. I had to pass Sunny Isle every day to go walk, and I remember Pueblo open up, but mm -hmm. Pueblo didn't last long. I can't tell you how long. Yeah. And they didn't last too long, and then that's when Sunny Isle divided into champs, um, office marks, and whoever did it. Okay. All right. Well, you know, yeah. thank God we could look back on these things and talk about it, you know. <laughs> I'm telling you, I, I, we're still alive, you know. We're still alive. We're still, still alive, alive you know. That's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I, I told him, you know, I mean, I was walking in Plaza and I was going every day to walk from Mary's Fancy where I live. Uh -huh. And I know I could remember Pueblo. Yeah. But Pueblo didn't last too long. Then that's when they divide it into champs and office max and someplace else. And if anybody listening out there and they know, give us a call, man. Yep, yep. All right. We got All right, my brother. You take care. All right. Good to hear your voice. You take care. Okay, brother. Can't and take care. All right, then. Good thing. Uh, All right. All the way from Texas. All right. Good morning, WSDX. <laughs> Les and good morning to you, Brother Canton. This is the kind voice of reasoning that creates. How are you? Oh, great, fantastic, outstanding. Just plain, if there's such a thing as plain excellent. <laughs> well, I, I call to give my tribution without the prefix con to your broadcast this morning uh, because of the call I just heard. I, I reside in Texas. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad he brought up about what happened after the hurricane and what did not happen after the hurricane, his observation. What are the two major things you learn after Hurricane Hugo? Well, I, the first the first thing I learned was what a hurricane really is. <laughs> because <laughs> after all of those years of some form of crying wolf or, you know, hearing about hurricane, but yeah. it's like, boom, the real thing came. You know, the most I remember was hard rains and, you know, flooding and thing, and you get a couple of days off from the school. That's the, that's the biggest thing <laughs> was, hey, this is serious business. This is for real. Life has, is forever changed. That's the first one. Um, I, I would want to say that the, the second, the second thing I would I would look to is the the reinforcement and the reality that we're just one community and pulling together is how we're gonna make it. Because wow, yeah, that that would be the second thing for me. <clears throat> okay, my, my my two major things I learned I learned some of them, but the major things I learned about that hurricane is how the National Guard was so dysfunctional after the hurricane. Mm. 
Okay. That, yeah, and that was the reason why I got guards. Because I was so disappointed. I said, I can't be a part of a unit like this where these, these guys are not, you know. You know, really, I'm thankful for General Moorhead, who was the commander at the time. And I worked for him directly after the hurricane. And he was operating out of the lieutenant governor's office there downtown Christian's head. Because at that time, the governor was not on the island and the lieutenant governor was not. Yes, sir. You there? Something happened there. You still there? Second, please. What businesses are intact and what are not intact? Uh huh. But, yeah, because General Moore had made concern was about how these people are going to be fed on the island. It's so great of him. Yeah. And the only two businesses that were intact and were never destroyed by the hurricane or by looters. Those two business establishments was the uh, supermarket there and uh, west next to Kmart. The building is still there. It hasn't been used. Uh, was that Sunshine? I think it was called. Uh, yeah, supermarket there in uh, west, Frederick said west. Kmart, next to Kmart, Frederick said west. And the other one was Plaza Extra. So those were the only two that were not looted. Those guys really protected their property. And, you know, the difference, though, between them and Grand Union and Preble and Woolworth, Woolworth was here also, is that those other places that were looted were corporate companies from the outside. They weren't not from within. So the Palestinians, they make sure that they protect what they built from scratch, you know, right here in the Virgin Islands. You know, with the guns on top of the roof and on the door, etc., which was, I think was great of them because when I reported back to General Moorhead that these are the only two places, and I talked to the owners, and I remember it was Wally who said to me, listen, uh, we not only have food here in the warehouse that can take care of Latina, but we have trailers, you know, uh, of food that we can supply, you know. So we have to protect that because if the looters destroy all that, then what are they going to be eating? Kasha? <laughs> so I was so glad he gave me the news that they do have food. I reported to General Moorhead, and what General Moorhead did was a very wise thing. He arranged that National Guard soldiers can be at Plaza Extra assisting them, protecting and making sure that nobody, including Sunshine's um, supermarket in West also. Because I was one of those National Guard members with my M16 was uh, securing those food. And you know, it's funny, I yeah. had people here in the Virgin Island, uh, I, when I write my biography, I'll mention them, who had the nerve to roll up there to loot. And when they saw me, the remark was, oh, stupid it on me, National Guard for taking them Arabs, them food. Right. Yeah. You don't have folks who say all kinds of things. There's, there's no such thing as a free lunch, okay? And it's, it's no different than this, the same situation where they tried to dismantle and take the, the, the generator that was keeping AT&T afloat, <laughs> you know, in Maria. I mean, it's this short-sightedness and, and in some ways stupidity in the behavior, the selfishness in the behavior. And you're going to always have those who are going to succumb to that type of, of thinking, you know. And that's that's mm -hmm. reality. <clears throat> that's reality. Anyhow, Brother Yates, I, I, I got something. Huh? The second thing I mentioned, too. Okay, but I got, somebody, I got somebody holding on, so we got to speed it up. Oh, they can hold on. They listen. They don't <laughs> listen to, don't, don't okay. say that. Don't say that. Nah, don't. <laughs> no, I'm telling you, really. They, okay. yeah, they learn, that's why they call. They, no, 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 no. no. They've been there for a while, man. But anyhow, you go However, ahead. You go ahead. You go the, ahead. Second, the second thing that I learned that stood uh -huh. out the most uh -huh. is, is the power of road shields. What's road shields is a German name, a German uh, uh, family that established an, uh, the, the Red Cross. It's called Red Cross in English. It's called Rot, Rot Shield in German. And that organization was one of the most powerful organizations. I learned that because of Hugo. Because after the hurricane, to shop at Plaza Extra in the supermarket, you cannot use American dollars. The only way you can get to buy stuff there was using the Red Cross voucher. 
And that was amazing when I realized that the voucher of the records had more power, validity, than the Yankee dollar. These are things that the Virgin Islands never pay attention to. You know, the Sunday the hurricane came, because I remember the National Guard. The same Sunday and the day before, American dollar was king up in here. After the hurricane, it had no value. You couldn't use that to, to do any trading and business. You had to use Red Cross voucher. I'm going to go with that. Okay. All right. Well, I appreciate you hanging in there, man, and I'm glad that you made it oh, no, safe. No, no, oh, no. Go ahead. No, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad that you Thank made it, made it through safe with the, the storm and everything else. Uh, oh, me too. Oh, okay. I'm just saying I was following it on the radar, and it was a close call. People may not even really appreciate how close a call it was, but just look at Puerto Rico, and you'll know what it could have been. <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah. In all things, that's why it is written: in all things, give thanks. Definitely. Definitely. Thank you. All right. You take care, man. Have a great one. WSTX. Uh, yeah, doggy. Yes, sir. How you doing today? Uh, how are you? Doing fine. Can, under the under the circumstances, doing doggone well. Yeah. Okay. I I just tuned in. And I heard the caller before the last had had asked a question relative whether Grand Union had reopened. I I know the one on Saint Thomas. I don't believe it ever reopened. That was it. Uh huh. After, after Hugo. Uh, what I do remember mostly of Hugo is that I, I was working for the Department of Housing at the time, and uh, because of my training in FEMA program, I was dispatched to St. Croix, and mm -hmm. I was, I mean, I couldn't believe my eyes when I saw what the wind, force of wind did to the, those big heads refinery tanks. I mean, they fold them up like tissue. And, uh, um, you know, I, I really couldn't believe that I stayed there. Be no, I'm saying, what, what am I talking about? No, no, no. Okay, anyway, I um, was doing some, um, some gathering of information, impact assessment and what's that. So as it relates to WAPA, I had to rely on some uh, former employees that I worked with back in the day, you know, the the Pena brother, father and brother, I think, was in the plant, plant engineers, or Sexto Pinero, Hector Rodriguez, and those guys in the plant, and I mean, on the in the field, in the line department. But, you know, it's funny because even back then, we had some sort of, I wouldn't call it a rivalry between islands. I, I mean, there were those who were forced in a divide and a wedge. But it became a political situation as to why I had to come to St. Croix to do the damage assessment. So I simply got on a Navy helicopter and came back to St. Thomas. There was enough work for me to do over, over in St. Thomas. But um, you mentioned that you had seen a few hurricanes. What about the Mother's Day flood of 1962? I, I, I wouldn't have known anything about that in the context of getting around the place. Uh, oh, yeah, why? I, I, I was too young. I, I was too old. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm too old. okay. <laughs> well, I mean, I have heard about a whole lot of things, but... Uh, the, the most serious one I remember was the, the Mother's Day flood of 1962. It's not like when, you know, you're, you're custom, you know, it is your mother and them have you going to church, you get up and you're ready to go to church and you're just looking through the windows because the sky opened out of nowhere and it rained until Wednesday. You, you feel me? Yeah, I remember those kind of rains. You could tell that oh, things have changed. Oh, I remember okay. the, the rain. <laughs> yeah. The second one was, uh, what well, it was, uh, Klaus. I think it and this was a tropical storm to me that I've seen in Virgin Islands. The tropical storms um, have more water in them than wind. So, uh, tropical storm, Klaus was another one. In, uh, in what, 84, it was 84, yes. Uh, in, in Wapa, when there were more poles on the ground and there the was standing, and uh, uh, that year my um, 
my ex-marine and the maintenance engineer, Rihelio Hatchet, got electrocuted. And uh, after that, it was what? I saw about a little things in between 84 and then, but then, then 89, of course, Hurricane uh, Hugo, Hugo made me a done, as they say. And then in, um, what it was, in 2005, was it? Uh, 2005? Maryland. Yes, Maryland. Yes, sir. Oh, we have had some bad weather. Well, I mean, of course, I would have my father tell me about the 1928 gale. They never call them hurricanes. Those the 1932, 1926, and all those kind of things. He was born in 1905, so of course, he would have seen all those things. But we are lucky. We are lucky because when you look at the destruction that bad weather has done to other places, and uh, I don't know that say we lucky, we are spared with this, with that, and I don't know, but uh, we better start preparing more. I mean, because I look at Puerto Rico. In Maria, they lost 3,000 people. The, 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 the grid is still catching the tail. And um, they, they're working feverishly now at Luma, Luma Energy, this private company, rebuilding it since back then. And it's with 209 projects of rebuilding, they are long way, very long way from rebuilding. Well, anyway, uh, yeah, that's about it for now. Well, just said in, in you know, as we get ready to, to run out of here, um, the there's a very interesting thing that's coming out about the funding that was there for Puerto Rico and how they've really okay. only been oh, yeah. able to spend about 15%. And this is, mm -hmm. this is something that's plaguing not just Puerto Rico, but, and, but the Virgin Islands also. This is a situation where FEMA and all these folks, all this stuff is promised, but getting the tap to open up and the money actually flow? I mean, uh, five, well, five years later, it is not an accident that, that money from, from, um, from back then still hasn't uh -huh. been spent. It's not for lack of trying. But uh -huh. the, the type of obstacles you got to jump through, the hoops you got to jump through to make it happen. And I, I say that because we, we're in the season now with the politics and everything else. Okay? And I, I don't want people mm -hmm. to get sidetracked because it, it, elections come and elections go. The question, mm -hmm. the question is what is going to change? And what is going to change in the context of not here but the federal government? This is what we got to realize. Well, you know, government. let me tell you something about the federal government because I have... I never, well, I work for the, gov the federal government when I work in the Congress of the United States, but I have trained with FEMA all over America, okay? And I know how FEMA operates and they don't operate. Now, Puerto Rico has been rife with corruption in the power distribution system to which it has been flimsy. They wasn't paying no attention to that because everybody's on the God blast to take. Granted, I'm there with you on that. And I'm not going to say the same thing for the voice. No, I don't care who push up the bloody mouth. Yeah, but my, that's, that's, but that's not my focus. My, my, no, no, it's my, my focus. Yeah, I know. And, and I'm just saying in terms of what I was saying, <laughs> right, because, yes, you got to deal with corruption and these things. I understand. Uh -huh. But zero dollars don't fix corruption. Zero dollars don't fix your grid. You, they, 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 okay, what, what fixes it is billions. And I'm telling you, that's what Albert Bryan has. Billions and he ain't doing with it. I got. No, I, okay, well, you could go. All right, talk with you. I got. All right, no problem. All right, okay. Well, that's fine. And you, you, I, I was hoping not to so much get into into who you support and all this other stuff. Okay, that's fine. Uh, no problem. I, all I'm saying is that this is a problem that transcends administrations. And when we get so caught up into look at what's happening with Trump you got people who are going to support Trump regardless of whatever he does or doesn't do I don't want to go down that road because in the end what does that do for my quality of life All right. and that's what, I'm, that's what I'm looking at how do we get it so that these federal dollars can actually go from plan to implementation Looking beyond the immediate of an election going on now, we need to, to, to put our heads together and figure out how we can get the right connections and influences that they 
there be some type of revamping of how FEMA works in that regards, how the federal funds. When you look at how much money was put out for COVID and you find out who went and bought Lamborghini, who went and did this, who went and, and took the, the federal monies but still fired their employees and all this other stuff going on. If you're looking for corruption, you could find it. But the question is, how did the, the, the bill get implemented? How did the law get implemented in such a way that allowed for it? Going back afterwards and doing the investigations and sending a few people to jail or, or, or whatever is done, that doesn't address the issues, the infrastructure issues in particular that we're talking about. So that's my concern <coughs> and focus. All right? I know sometimes it's very upsetting and you have to feel how you feel. Mm, we got no problem with that either. Okay? That's just the, the, the reality of it. Okay, well, it's almost the hour of nine, and uh, we're going to be having Women Coalition come in and spend some time with us. Yeah, um, in a little bit to talk about the uh, special program that they have going on on Sunday, National Day of remembrance but before we get to that I just want to let you know that here we got the law enforcement planning commission and the Virgin Islands Juvenile Justice State Advisory Group Board and they are working together to have the National Night Out yes National Night Out September 24th Saturday folks at 6 p.m. at the Fredericksted Post Office they're going to march from the Fredericksted Post Office to Buttle Park, all right? They're gonna have some featured guests, Damian Lang, Toby Derima, they're gonna have youth groups and more. But come on out, National Night Out. Come out, come out in force, come out in peace, come out in love. That's right, it's your community, folks. It's your community. This is sponsored by the Law Enforcement Planning Commission, the Virgin Islands Juvenile Justice State Advisory Group Board, and Crime Prevention Partners territory-wide. You want some more information about National Night Out? I'm going to give you a number here to call. It's 774-6400. That's under the big 340 umbrella. 774-6400. Hundred, all right. Good thing here on St. Croix. It doesn't matter really where you call. It's all one one push and one people. But three four zero seven one three three five two two. Now I just want to remind you that LEPC has a, a website, lepc.vi.gov. You can check that out also. <coughs> all right, so. We got National Night Out going on, and then we have the National Day of Remembrance ceremonies going on on the Sunday with Women's Coalition, and we'll be having them come in here in a minute to talk about that, definitely. You know, things happen, and remembering is important. It's like knowing your history. Remembering is important because sometimes things happen and the memory and knowledge of what happened gives us tools, information, strategies that we can put in place to say, well, never again. We can make it never again. Okay. Good thing, folks. Good thing, good thing, good thing. Anyhow, it's here at the, at the hour, and we're going to take a quick little break, and then we're coming back for you. All right.
Yes. Good morning, Doug. Good morning. The storm was good. I live in the West and we did good. It filled up my cistern, so I needed that. <laughs> Otherwise, it was good. <laughs> That's right, that's right. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Recording in progress. Okay. Yes, that's that's a big thing for us. It's our uh, 15th year. I started it about 15 years ago when we really start noticing a kind of like a slight surge in homicide about 15 years ago. And it's interesting when I noticed that uh, we were getting that surge, I realized there was a lot of people coming to us for support who loved ones had been killed. So it was kind of taking us out of our comfort zone of domestic violence and sexual assault. But we, but the agency mission is actually to, to deal with all crime victims. So it wasn't anything we hadn't been trained for. We just, I guess, wasn't expecting this on surge. And now we like overwhelmed with, of uh, families that's experiencing homicide, which is really sad. That that part uh, really takes a smile off my face. But the National Day of Remembrance has become a, um, a sense of peace for families on St. Croix. They actually look for it and expect it because we've been doing it for 15 years. Every year, September the 25th, we do the National Day. And whether it's a Saturday, Sunday, a day of the week, it doesn't matter. We stick to that day because that is the National Day of Remembrance for murder victims. Um, the colors we wear to signify it is red and black. And last year we were at agriculture, it was very successful. But this year we're gonna be on our own premise. I'm really excited to say, you know, we've been building this new community center. I don't know if you notice it when you run it in and out, well, I'm I'm really excited about it. We calling it our community space because we want a place for the community to be able to come and not feel like they got to pay hundreds and thousands of dollars to have a meeting or just meet up. We also want to make our space up here a sense of serenity for families that come here. So we're going to be <laughs> fencing it, lighting it, cameraing it because as you will know what happens next door with your sister so we are in the process of getting cameras to getting lighting and me out there begging for money to fence the area and i mean the entire area so that we can do because we are having some issues here but sunday is really important because it's the day that the families get out and what we do is do we do a remembrance for the loved ones i mean the, we got over 600 names on our wall of remembrance. I don't know but I don't know if you ever went to our Facebook page and it says National Day of Remembrance. Anybody that's listening, you can go to Women's Coalition Facebook, National Day of Remembrance, and you will see a wall of people who have been murdered in the last maybe 20 years or so that we put on the wall. We've been trying to focus on St. Croix. At first, we were trying to do the whole Virgin Islands, but it was too overwhelming. So now we're more or less focusing on St. Croix, but we keep getting families. And again, the, the Women's Coalition about the community, we're now getting families say, well, my son was killed in the States, so my daughter was killed in the States. Clement, can we please do it here too? Because they were born here and we go, okay, we're never going to say no to a family. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> sure. So Sunday, we're going to be here on our, on our new terrace, we call it, that I'm proud of. It's going to be outside on the terrace. 
It will be covered, and if it rains, we will go inside the new space that I'm kind of holding off to have a big opening. But the National Day takes precedent over that. But it's going to be from four to six. You got two parking. You can come in our parking space, parking lot on Fisher Street or, or behind the building on East Street. We got parking in that area. So that's another thing. The churches seem to be enjoying our parking lot. So we got this parking space over here. Uh, uh, everybody seemed to be enjoying it more so than us. So it's plenty of room to park. It's going to be four to six. We want to give people a chance to go to church or do whatever they need to do Sunday morning. It's not long. It's going to be four to six. But what's what makes this uh, day special? Because every year we have a different focus. And this year we're focusing on healing. Remembering your loved ones, but healing and taking your time to grieve and move on. Because I hear all the time when people come to see me, but Miss Lewis, my family say it was a year ago I should get over. You know, everybody grieve loss differently. And it's up to the individual to move in that space. As long as they move it, I would be concerned if they just stuck. But as long as they move at whatever pace they need to do, they need to move it. So we got Charlene Springer, who's going to come and do mindfulness, which I'm so excited, teaching people how to take care of themselves without costing a lot of money, Doug. You know, everything is money. So she's going to get them techniques on when you're feeling low, when that memory hits and you're having those crying spells, things you can do to help you get over that. We're going to have activities for the children because we never have events and, and not make it family friendly. So we'll be having coloring and different activities to keep the uh, children busy. We're going to show the National Wall of Remembrance. It would be We'll be doing a memory of, and then it'll be going on. We're going to have on our quilt that was presented to us last year. We're really excited about that with the names of murder victims on St. Croix. We're going to be doing some poetry. We're going to be having some incense and meditation music going on at the same time. But I think what people like the most, it, they get to speak out. This is the opportunity for people who lost loved ones to come and talk about what it's been like. No matter how many years the case hasn't been starved. Every time somebody else get murdered, how that affects me. When will I get justice? When will I get peace? And just to let them know that even if they haven't got justice, even they haven't got peace, this agency is gonna help them always remember. Because not because somebody love you die, you don't love them anymore. They're gonna always be in your heart. So we give the remembrance like we do these cool rocks. They can put the name on it as some special and take it home. Uh, this year, I hope it comes in time. I haven't seen it. I ordered these red heart stress balls that you could squeeze to make you feel good when, you, when you're having some moments. It's really about healing and supporting and remembrance because we got a lot of killing going on and nobody seems to be able to stop it. We asking people, if you see some, say something because it might be somebody death for me today and somebody death for you tomorrow. What would you want? What would you look like? We support the families through court. We go to the police department with them. We're now often support groups for those who lost one that want to suffer from grief, the suffering from grief and loss. So it's a very intricate part of the agency that most people I don't think is that aware of, that we have that whole grief and loss piece here at the agency. Mm-hmm. 
Yes, and insensitive and losing touch. And I, a big part that I want to mention that I guess I should have mentioned earlier is the impact it have on children. You know what it's like to lose your father and you three or four or five or 10 or 12, losing your brother, your son, your mother. People don't understand that. They have to live with that for the rest of their life. We hear it about in the newspaper, the police respond. Hopefully a court case come on, but this is something they have to deal with for the rest of their life. And I'm not sure we get that. I don't want the community to become so insensitive that we don't care anymore when there's another shooting. I mean, we are already going to the scenes or whatever and putting the pictures on Facebook before the family could see it and making comments that's really cruel and insensitive to families. I want people to understand that What's happening to our community, members of our community could happen to us today or tomorrow. We got to show a heart. We got to be supportive. If you know somebody that have experienced a loss, uh, take them a dinner one day or just offer to be supportive. Watch the kids. Let them know you care. Come with them on Sunday. Sunday is open to the entire community. Let them know that you feel their pain and show up and support them on Sunday. Everybody could do a little thing, Doug. I know we all suffering. I know we got money issues. We just went through the storm. A lot of people got leaks. A lot of people are flooding. But it's always going to be something. Mm -hmm. But that don't, that don't mean we need to get to the point where we just stop caring about each other. And we can't. This agency is not going to let people forget their loved ones. Yes, and it, it's something. about people. It's really about people. With all the things that you have pulling on, on you from time to time in, that, that has your attention. We do the things we do for life, for loved ones, for, for community. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, what would, be the, what would be the point? And in that sense, what, what you do by, by providing this forum and this, this opportunity. And, and it's, it's very touching in a way, I think, that especially for our teenagers, if you've got teens out there uh, that don't have homework at that particular time or whatever, bring them along with you. Bring them yeah. along because they, they need to understand. What's going on with these guns is not like a video game that you just reset the game and start all over again. A death means forever. That person's gone forever. And uh, don't forget the teens are suffering as well. Remember that they impacted by all these gun violence. Some of the gun violence takes place around the schools. So you have to do this whole piece with children in schools, uh, with all the violence that's taking place now in the schools. I'm so afraid we keep seeing these videos of kids, children fighting. The next thing we know, Doug, we're gonna hear somebody then kill somebody at one of these schools. It's just one thing after the next. So to me, all this fighting is these young people crying out, we need something, we need help. Somebody need to come in here and help us because all they doing is fighting and fighting is obviously not the solution so we would love for teens to come out we want children to come out we want whole families to come out i mean it's called women's coalition healing and speaking our pain you get to speak your pain there's no wilson st croix gonna let you get up on the mic and talk about how you feel and what happened to your loved one and get the support that you need while you're doing it as well as walking and going home with some things that help you move forward, some things that help you when you're hitting the lowest, some things that's gonna help you feel good. I have never did one of these events when one of the family members or many family members come up to me and say, Miss Lewis, thank you. We know you're not gonna forget my son. You're not gonna fit my brother. We know that at least every day, this time of the year, the coalition gonna be there for us. That means a lot, Doug. They look for this day. I mean, I'm sure if we didn't do it, maybe they would ask for it, but we've never skipped, never, not even doing COVID. We had National Day doing COVID. We did it once on um, online, but last year we did it at agriculture and we did sanitize and masks. And I'm glad I mentioned that when you come, we will have masks for people, because I still wear masks. We will have masks and we will have sanitation stations and the chairs will be apart. So you don't have to worry about coming and feeling like we being COVID ir irresponsible. I know we're supposed to be in the endemic, but people still getting COVID. And I don't want nobody to leave our event and say I went to the coalition function and got sick. All right. 
Well, <laughs> listening to listening to those folks talk about their experience and their their loss mm -hmm. is and being there to hear it is important because from 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 my perspective a lot of people look at it as something that happened in the past yes yes and yes. we build on the past and if mm -hmm. we want the future to be different we need to understand the past and how each of us in our own little way can probably make the difference just by paying attention to behavior you talk about the schools and the possibilities here we we hope to, to god we never have that but someone being observant somebody saying something somebody bringing to the, someone's attention that somebody's going through something and they need some attention this is all part of of what you help to promote when you do this every year, having the, the, the National Day of, of Remembrance. And folks, if you've never been to one, I encourage you to come out. If the parking lot gets full, I'm gonna tell you, we got plenty of space on the street, <laughs> okay, to park. We do, and we got two parking lots. You know, usually when mm -hmm. the church is having their events, they fill up our parking lot. Mm -hmm. But we have this parking lot on Fisher, and now we have a parking lot on, on east street side. too yes yeah so they can go in and enter from east street or they can enter from uh fisher street but i also want to also remember because a lot of people wanted to see miss uh, uh ada amestica franco and her family did a quilt dub did you have you seen the quilt yes i saw the quilt i saw it okay saw well it. she did this quilt imagine all the time it took her to sit sit there and put all the name so we will de we will be displaying her quilt again it will be moving forward a part of national day of remembrance every year actually i'm gonna have it put up in the new building so even when it's not the national day if families want to come back or somebody want to see the quilt it's going to be in our new building when the new building is open i'm right. also contemplating putting like a little yard with flowers just somewhere where people kind of can sit out and get a little sense of peace we don't have many places like that right. but they can just come and get a sense of peace yeah well so. I, I want to uh, not drifting too far from what we're talking about but mm -hmm. you had the old building and the old building succumbed <laughs> to the fire and you got the new building and now you've expanded with this this other building here and okay. you know, I, I you know I talk about you guys, right? I, I say you know yes. you know, seven seven days a week, twenty four hours a day, three hundred and sixty six days of the year. We appreciate it too, Doug. Women's coalition is there and you mm -hmm. never know who you may be able to help by being able to refer someone or it may be you. And so, you know, I, I appreciate what you do. But I just want to make sure that the, com the, the community is aware that that women's coalition is always on the move, can gather no moss. There's always something going on. And this new building has brought certain new capabilities in terms of how you can serve the community. And if you, and, and you know, you talked about just a little bit, but if you could just touch on that, you know, and, and, and let them know because People hear about an organization, an organi and then folks, Women's Coalition is growing to serve, growing to serve. And I want you to, to be aware and be able to appreciate, and maybe to the extent that it's needed, that they can be there for you also. So if you could just touch a little bit on the, the new capabilities. Uh, Definitely. And, and so let me also <laughs> say the coalition been doing this for 41 years, Doug. So we have moved and... Uh, our mission has always been to move and uh, move toward whatever the community needs. So every all our history, and I've been with the agency 40 years, has always been about whatever the community need. That's what we support. This building will get a opportunities for the little groups around here that have meetings like neighborhood meetings. Uh, if somebody want to have uh, their meetings there, I'm hoping to get some funds. So while we're talking about using the new community center, I'm expecting people to make donations because all of it going to fall on us. We will now have to pay extra lights, extra electricity, 
extra maintenance, all that's going to come on the nonprofit. We're not the government. Some people seem to think the Women's Coalition is the government because all the things we do. We're nonprofit. We have to write grants, raise funds. I'm constantly begging for money. So we are going to be asking for donations when people come and utilize the system because that's only, I have to keep it clean. I have to keep it the maintenance. I'm not going to be like some of our government builders that's derelict where we get these buildings and we let them fall away and don't take care of them. And then 10 years later, we, we, we want to close down the school. And if we had it taken care of it, we wouldn't be there. So we're going to take care of this building. But I'm trying to get some donors now to help me get a, um, one of those teleconference. We got a huge conference room. And I want to get a teleconference set up. So if you want to meet with people in St. Thomas and St. John, you can come to our room. Of course, you have to organize it through us, have meetings there like, like other people. Uh, if you want to do, I don't know, just maybe some for the community, some kind of activity that you think going to help uplift the community, you can come and let us know if you have meetings. We just we want to be a community center. This 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 building is not just about the com, uh, women's coalition. It was built with the uh, with uh, federal funds. It was built from HUD, and our mission is always to be about the community. So we gonna have a big event. You would know because we are coming to you, Doug, first when we do the opening. We gonna have an opening for the community. Again, we are not one of them agencies where only certain people could come. It's going to have an opening where the community can come and see what's there. We're going to have refreshments. We're going to be selling art T-shirts. Anyway, I'm hoping within the next couple of months we'll be able to do the official okay. opening so the community can come and see the building and get the feel of it. But yes, I am going to be putting lights. I'm going to be putting cameras and I'm going to be putting uh, uh, um, lights, cameras and fencing because we are already having problems with some of the homeless people, which you are familiar with. They have already started going and defecating behind the building, messing up the walls. So well, they didn't already started doing destructive stuff over there, Doug. And that's already sending me through 50 changes because they are already starting causing a problem. And you well know as well as I do yes, because yes. they say they're mentally ill. Nobody wants to do nothing about it. So. That we also, that's why I'm doing the camera, the lights and the fencing because of safety issues. Cause I don't want somebody to go over there and not be safe either. Exactly, exactly. Well, I, I just want to, to, to stress to the community that when we're talking about things like that, it, it, Women's Coalition, I think does a, a, a fantastic job of trying to meet the community where they are and to meet the yeah. needs. And the, the fact of the matter is, I know that from time to time you, you, you have uh, events where you partner with other organizations and so forth and so on. Folks, this is community. It's our people. And we've got to do what we need to do to preserve our community as That's well right. as to take care of those in, in need. And uh, <coughs> Women's Coalition, from my perspective, you're more than doing your part <laughs> in that regard. And so I, I really appreciate what, what you all do. Uh, and every opportunity for the community to come out because uh, whether it's National Day of Remembrance, in this case being held at the premises there or when you have the opening, all these things are important because folks, Women Coalition belong to you, okay? Yes, they're yeah. a nonprofit organization, they got a board yeah. and everything else, but when you look at what they do, they belong to you. That's so right. That's when, when she's talking about funds and support and so forth and so on, we're not talking about something going to a, a private corporation and doing this and doing that no 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 this is about putting the money back into the community so that's right doug every time we get money it goes right back i mean doug we have people that come here for basic necessities toilet paper toothbrush deodorant yeah people come to the women's coalition for everything and let me make it clear women and men not just women men come for toiletries too Anybody in the community come, if we have it, you can get it. If we don't have it, that's another story. But if we have it, it's available to the community, but you can't keep deplenishing stuff and no restocking. Exactly. 
So that's where our, that's what we need to support from the community. We need you to support when we have an event. We need you to make donations. I have people that send $10. That's cool. Nobody asking you to send hundreds and thousands of dollars. Now, if you have it like that, I would appreciate it. You can send it. <laughs> we would definitely take it. The other day, one of our donors donated a car because she came here and saw this old black car we've been using. And she was downsizing and she felt sorry for us and she gave us one of her cars. I mean, it's things like that really lets me know I know we're doing the right thing because every now and then somebody realizes we're doing stuff that make a difference. But yes, this is everything here. Everything about this agency is about this community. And that's never going to change. We are a community organization. We're nonprofit. We're not government. But everything is about the community. And next month is, I want to throw this in because we'll be back. Next month is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. And we got activities every week coming up. From wearing purple, we're doing a special panel. Doug, you're going to like this. We're doing a special panel in, panel in October focusing on men. Yeah, we think it's time. And we're going to be bringing in the men. So that's going to be really exciting. It's going to be a male perspective, looking at men who are victims, as well as looking at men who are perpetrators. And how do we help them both? And how do we support them? And, and seeing what it looks like and how it play out in our community. I'm really excited about that because we've never done that. That's one of these ideas I can, I'm like, yeah, we, we got to move with the times. All right. And so we're going to be doing that in October, but we're going to be doing a lot of stuff. So, you know, we're going to be calling you. Doug, let me say this to you and people can say what they want. You have really been good to us. You have been super supportive. The coalition, we feel like you are part of this agency in every form and fashion. Uh, I want to say publicly, thank you so much, because even though we do stuff that people don't know about it, they don't care. But you make sure that it gets out there and people know what we're doing. And it's really special for me because you are male. You're from St. Croix. You're local. You got this big heart and you really care. And that makes a big difference to us. I want to say on behalf of the entire agency, my staff, the people we serve, thank you so much from my heart. Well, I, I Never let us down. You always coming through. Matter of fact, every time something come up and Debbie say, Doug, I say, Debbie, we might be wearing <laughs> Doug out. It might, I'd be going, it might be too much. And she goes, no, Clement, uh, let me call Doug, let me go. So I want to say to you, Doug, don't think we take you for advantage, please. Just know we appreciate everything you do for us. Well, and if you ever need us for anything, let us know, because we'll be there for you. It's our community and we got to take care of it. All right, and, and while you're saying that, I just want to, at, at the same time, uh, express a thanks to WSDX and their community-minded format that they use that allows yes. us to do this. Because very Thank often you. the things that you do, you know, you go some places and they tell you, well, you have to pay this, you have to pay. No, 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 this is community. We've got, there's certain things, and I have to say Canadonia uh, uh, Communications has a commitment to community like that. There's certain things that need to get out regardless in that sense and so we're, we're, the doors are here are always open for organizations like women's coalition that do the type of things that and continue to do the type of things that you do in in the community now you mentioned one of those uh, acts of kindness and if, if you can i'm sure over the years you have various people who have done things like that and without calling the names necessarily that we can start just giving little tidbits to the community you know somebody did this for us can you imagine and, and I, I just want them to appreciate that there are a lot of good people here a lot of good people good here. things in our community and ain't looking for nothing mm -hmm. they just do it because they care this is where they live and this is their community and the more we can reinforce that in people's minds to keep that spirit alive and thriving that's how we gotta live people together we got to take care of each other. And I'm glad you said that because people always think when you ask them for donations or support that it always got to be a lot of money. You don't have to bring money. If you come and tell me, Clemma, you having this event, can I come and help set up? That's an act of kindness. 
when we closing up, you helping me close up, that's the act of kindness. It's not always about money, it's the heart and the spirit. Or somebody called me and said, Clemma, I'm going to pick up a couple of people and bring them and take them home. You know how much that means? So you're right. It is really about acts of kindness. It's about people caring. And it shouldn't always be from just the people who we help. It should be for all of the community because you don't know when you're going to need these services. That's, right. that's, the re that's the reality. None of us knows when you're going to need these services. And I'm not going to tell you how many times people have come to me, particularly men, and say, wow, Clemma, I never thought I was going to have to call you. Or I never thought I'd be standing in the hospital with you. Or I never did. And I'm like, well, you're here now, so let's move forward. But I get that like, wow, Clemma, I never thought. You don't. You don't know. You don't know. You don't know. That's, that's just the way it is. That's just the way it is, folks get so so comfortable that that happened over there well yeah. over there could be right where you are you know at any time and we've seen it from time to time so in in, in that sense so but coming full circle national day of remembrance is this sunday sunday this sunday september the 25th from four to six right here on our new terrace you can enter on 7 East Street or 45 Fisher Street. If you know where our building is, just come in here and walk up the steps, or you can go around the corner and come in. And let me say this because I'm very sensitive, sensitive to disability because I'm getting old. We also have a lift. If you come in a wheelchair and you can't walk up steps, we got you. All we right. got right. you. All so right. we are All sensitive right. to everybody. Don't worry about, oh, my God, it's steps. Or, we got you. We got you. Just let me know. We got you. All right. Okay. Women <laughs> Coalition on the move. I mean, on the move. Always moving. <laughs> I haven't yeah, seen that stuff. Yeah, too much, Doug. <laughs> Sometimes I'll be going cute. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. When I grow up, I want to be like you guys, okay? <laughs> Always yeah, I'll be, moving. Hopefully, I'll be passed on. Hopefully, it will keep this torch burning for as long as we need it to burn. That's All my right. feeling. Fantastic. Well, thanks for gracing us today with this important message. Things coming up, things happening, things going on, folks. If it ever get too quiet in your mind about what's going on on St. Croix, WSTX is right here to keep you up to breath on that. But if you ever have any questions about what's going on at Women's Coalition, what's the number, Clemma? 340773. 9272 and it's 24 7 365 so you can call evening weekends and holidays and the answering service will either direct you to me or to an advocate that's on duty so there's no such thing as i can't get nobody that ain't true unless the phones are off because of the power or something like that we're available 24 7 340 773 9272 and don't forget WCXTX.org website. Go to our web. All our events are already always put up. You can send messages. You can go on our Facebook. We got a YouTube channel. You can just send us messages all over social media. And Miss Benjamin is always on top of it. She makes sure I get the messages. So if you send a message, she sends it directly to me so I can respond. So it's not like you're going to send us something. We're not going to respond. We're going to respond. Right. That's why we're here. And I, I so, just Doug, thank you. Mm -hmm. And thank WXTX as well, because you're right. If they didn't have their form, you wouldn't be able to do what you do. So I would like to give them a special thank you as All well. Right. Fantastic. Okay. Well, thank, thank you, you, Doug. Until have next a good time. day. I hope to see you on Sunday if you get a chance. All right. It'll Sunday be... it is. Okay. All right. right thank right you. Right across the street. Right across the street. <laughs> <laughs> And you'll get the glimpse of the new building. Oh, you know, and, and, and it's it's so funny because, you know, in between us is the Canagata Yard. Mm. And, you know, as as children, we were back and forth. That that, it, it, that was part of our playground. And so they got these fences and everything. It didn't mean anything to us. We didn't go down the street <laughs> and car, just climb the fence or whatever. So push on the shelf, I just climb the fence and walk right on over. <laughs> <laughs> Well, right now you just walk through, but uh, yes, yes, yes. I, you have I, to I'm work so on happy that. that. How they keep in the grounds there—it's fantastic. All right. Well, thanks All right. again. Thank you.
Looking Thank forward you. To next time. Have a good day. Thank you. Do you. The same. All right, All right folks. Bye -bye. Here on WSTX. No place like WSTX. All right. So, this is what we do. Uh, Recordings. Every, every Thursday when we get here on WSTX. Yes, creator willing that health, strength, and stamina are, are there on our side that we can be here and be with you. All right. It's now 25, 24 minutes before the hour. Yeah, 25 minutes before the hour. Watch now. Watch now. Image, we back you again. Miss. We got another little quiver for you. Balance, hey, you thought it was good the first time? Man, we had so much fun, we could do it again. Hello, my people, how you doing today? It's been a long time coming, what I have to say. Look at our culture, things are not the same. Let's not sit down and do nothing while it goes down the drain. Please help me. Let's up for the masqueraders. The musician and mask makers. All the way. Hey. Look around the arts that are dying. We must prevent this from happening.
Yeah, folks. All right. So, in a minute here, we'll have uh, the other folks coming in here to run their show. In the meantime, I'm going to take liberty with, with their lateness. No, they're not late. They're just doing what they got to do. Okay? Uh, and talk about a couple of things here just real quick before I check out. National Night Out, National Night Out, and National Night Out, all right? I'm mentioning these things and repeating them because these are community-oriented initiatives that all of us need to be involved in in one way, form, or fashion, right? And it's sponsored by the Law Enforcement Planning Commission, the Virgin Islands Juvenile Justice State Advisory Group Board, and Crime Prevention Partners Territory-wide. Yeah. Come on out, National Night Out, March there from the uh, Fredericksted Post Office to Buttle Park. Yeah, streets belong to you. Okay, don't give them up to anybody else, especially people that don't have good intentions. No, you take your streets and keep them, make them yours. All right, good thing. And then on Sunday at the Women's Coalition here in Christiansted at their building, You'll get a chance to see the new building if you haven't seen it already. Just a little peekaboo. Mm, yep, they're going to have a big opening ceremony and all this other good stuff. But it's National Day of Remembrance. So it's a great opportunity to come by and meet other families that have either the concern of having lost one to gun violence, lost someone to gun violence, or someone that's there in support. It's important. We can't just have these things happen. It's reported in the news, and then it just dies out and goes away. No, 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 no. The future is a platform to be, to, to be built by what's happened in the past and guided by what happened in the past. So, folks, we have to pay attention to these things that have happened because in the same way it happened yesterday, it could happen tomorrow. We have to learn the lessons and see what we can do as a community, strategy-wise, to make sure as much as possible we can minimize these type of events happening in our community. And it doesn't just happen like you turn off a switch and you're good to go. Uh-uh. It means being involved in your community. If you're not involved in a particular nonprofit or some organization working with our youth, I highly encourage that you do that. Find your little niche or your little way or big way that you make a difference in your community. But just find it and grab it and do it and become known for what you do and relied upon for what you do because in the end, it is your community. All right. Good thing. So while we have the opportunity here to do something other than other than Doug running his voice, okay? Yeah. Let's um, listen to a couple of oldies here because um, it's, all, it's always good as a matter of reflection. No pun intended. As a matter of, of reflection, we look at some of our, our uh, music that we have going on. Folks, I just want to tell you, man, it's, it's one of those things. You got to enjoy life. The place is nice. It's got so much to do here. But you know what? It's only going to happen if you get out there and be the special ingredient. All right? Okay. So they're rolling in now, but we're going to get this song going here because, folks, it's a nice place to be. All right? Mark the X. This is AM 970 WSTX.
hear the news and then talk about it. AM 970 WSTX. Your home for Ital food on our lovely island is aptly named Ital in Paradise. Ital in Paradise is the place you bring your friend to show them just how good vegan and pescatarian food can be. Located at 2220 Queen Cross, above Guan Monier, we are open Monday to Saturday, 12 to 9 p.m. Call for takeout orders at 713-4825. That's 713-4825. The Virgin Police Department is pleased to announce the launch of its body-worn camera program that will equip the VIPD patrol officers with the use of body-worn cameras for law enforcement operations. This program will allow officers to record enforcement and investigative encounters between the police and the public. These cameras will provide an objective record of encounters, simplifying the reviews of events by supervisors and improve accountability. Keeping our territory safe is one of our top priorities. This program will promote trust, transparency, and confidence in our community. The implementation of the body-worn cameras will aid in the investigation of use of force and alleged misconduct to bring them to a timely conclusion. The VIPD BWC program aims to modernize local policing for officers and citizens alike and will be mutually beneficial in protecting our officers and members we serve in this community. Keep it on the X. AM 970 WSTX. They told me we don't see color, as though this statement was reassurance that they accepted me, that they acknowledged me, that somehow without my color, I was more of a human being. But this is not reality. Brown, black, and in between, every color has a history, and my melanin is a part of me. My melanin tells a story of slaves on a ship brought to work, sugarcane fields, of families torn apart and ripped, destroyed to build a nation that to this day won't accept me. My melanin reflects glory from the kings and queens before me, from the culture integrated into me, from the freedom fighters that fought for me, but they told me we don't see color. So they must understand how this offends me, how they tore my identity and tried to tell me they only care about my personality. As though we should ignore the impact racism has had on me, that the police can gun me down for walking down the street, that my people die screaming, I can't breathe. That from the day I was born, America was against me. But they told me we don't see color, and that confuses me. Because when they enslaved us, they saw our color. When they segregated us, they saw our color. When they point their gun at us, take aim and fire, they still see our color. So let's stop playing colorblind. Look at me. Look at all of me, see my identity, embrace the history of my color, the richness, the elegance, the refined glow as the sun reflects on my melanin and recognize that any part that they find ugly, they tainted with their lies of freedom and equality as they continue to take advantage of the power that comes from this rich color but have the audacity to look me in my eye and tell me we don't see color. So let the colorblind hear me. You will see me, all of me, the good, the bad, and in between, because your color have brought me to this society. And though you continue to feed me false dreams, I have faced reality. That this nation was built on the backs of those the same color as me, and you made sure you saw their color so you will see me. You will stop tearing up my identity. You need to take time to reflect on history. You need to stop spilling blood on the streets. You need to stop claiming to be an ally if you can't even accept the reality that you are not solving the problem by pretending that the issue runs as deep as the melanin which God has blessed me. You cannot live in ignorant bliss claiming to accept me but refusing to study what your people have done to me and yes, we may all be human today, but it is the savages before you that have done this to me, and now it is your responsibility to see my color, respect it, embrace it, and instead say to me, 
we see your color. We see how we have scarred it. We see how we disrespect it by not acknowledging its importance. And we will not aim for the system to be colorblind, but we will tear it down and rebuild so that we keep the truth in mind, but treat black people like humans this time. You will see my color. Color is a beautiful thing, I know, I know. Color is a beautiful thing, I know, oh yes, I know. Color is the eat ching ching, far shore ding dang. Color is a beautiful thing, I know, I know. Color is a beautiful thing. Color is the itching chain for sure. Ding dang. Color is the beautiful thing I know. I know. Your community radio station and voice of St. Croix. This is AM 970. WSTX. It's time for In Session, the talk show that covers the flip side of our cultural, political, economical, and social affairs. Now let's join our host, Robert B. Moorhead, because the session is in. in. Yes, yes, good morning, good morning. In Session, this we in session for two hours. If Ocala is speak about anything and everything. Uh, the number to call is 773-0390, 773-0490. And if you're calling from outside the Virgin Islands, the area code is 340-773-0390, 340-773-0490. First thing on the agenda, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. This is Fire on the Mic. I have to thank WAPA. As I tell people, I'll be fair, I ain't a hypocrite. WAPA, first time in my life that a storm a hurricane came through, where WAPA stay on. In my area, I cannot speak for the whole island. But in my area, current was on, and I meet other people who current was on, and I meet some who current was off. So probably we had a few small packets where current went off, but in my area,